Time for another Toth Talk. That's when I read my Toth cards. And it gives me an opportunity to talk about the great cartoonist Alex Toth and his work and prompts me to give whatever thoughts randomly come forth. So today, in our eagerly waiting audience around the edge, friendly giant style, we have Bali Woman, nice wooden sculpture. Great for drawing. All right, we have Roly Poly Oli, which was, um, this was a toy uh, made when, they, I think it was made when they released the uh, cartoon series based on it that Nelvana did. It's a William Joyce property. He writes children's books, great children's books. This is Dusty Dog. My older daughter, Charlotte, made this when she was little, and I love it. It's a little character with big, long ears. Of course, we have Mute House. Doesn't say anything. It's just a house. Skull. You can't see him. He's off screen. He's why well, He was a little shy. Twig. I collected it. Great from nature. Look at these forms. You can learn to draw just by drawing something like this. Draw it from different angles. Anything. Everywhere and anything. There are things that you can employ. Uh, next over here, in the other section of the gallery, we have Kiki and, uh, who is it? Tombo from Kiki's Delivery Service. And it's broken, unfortunately, <laughs> the propeller. But it's a cool toy from Hayao Miyazaki's Kiki's Delivery Service. And a friend of mine went to Japan and was kind enough to buy me several items. Oh, Rolly's fallen over. He's going to have to stay there. Last is uh, Charlotte, my daughter, when she was little, made me this based on my wind elf ideas. That's a good way to send us on to the next reading of the postcards. And it says, hello, daddy. And she based it on these designs I'm doing, or did, and I'm still tinkering with, which you can find on Instagram uh, slash wind elf world, one word. Anyway, on to the Alex material. Um, so these are two postcards. He sent me postcards in different formats at different times. I guess he bought up different stocks of things. So I'm going to try and read both of these. And uh, we'll see where we get with it. And, and uh, they're very nice. Like he, I guess he bought a whole bunch. They're Windsor McKay themed long postcards. Kind of unique. And uh, they're based on Windsor McKay, Little Nemo and Slumberland. Which was a long ago wonderful illustrator still influencing all kinds of people. And um, Windsor McKay did political cartoons in the newspapers and he did an early animated film. He was regarded as a pioneer, one called uh, Gertie the Dinosaur, which you can see, I think it's on YouTube. And uh, of course he famously did Little Nemo in Slumberland, which was an early newspaper, beautiful, beautifully illustrated uh, cartoon page. <clears throat> and uh, here I'll quickly, retire these over here and this is again for the benefit of people who don't know Alex Toth and why I am always going on about him. Uh, these were reprint books done by Eclipse of his work on Zorro and um, the Walt Disney TV series and you know he famously said I think in different postcards they may or may not have been to me I can't remember but he wrote to lots of people but uh, there's Alex, uh, his own self-cartoon from 1987. Um, and there's him happily reading. The book has an intro by Howard Chaikin. And um, he famously said that he, I don't know what, at what point of this, he kind of did these fast. And because he got into an argument with the editor and he, he wanted to change some of the scripts, which is understandable. But they had a rigid uh, way of doing it. So he basically said, okay, I'm just going to crank it out the way you want. You don't want my artistic input. And of course, if this is cranking it out, then we all wish we could just crank it out. But uh, nice gray tones added. Alex is great for silhouetting. Look at that foreground. You can almost feel the camera moving or static, but the depth. Do you see that panel? Lighting. So many great things in here. I actually like, and I've heard other people say, if he was going fast, he, he drew it a little more informally. He wasn't as concerned about precise rendering. So if you look at some of the line work, there's gaps and there's a slashy looseness to it, which is really appealing. 
And um, often, you know, we, maybe not everybody, but it depends on your personality, how perfectionistic you are, but you kind of tighten up, you know, it's like the on stage thing, stage fright, like, oh, this is going to be published. I've got to make it perfect. But I guess by this point, he'd done enough stuff and that happens when you get in a rhythm of doing things. He didn't, uh, he didn't really concern himself with that. He just turned it out. Fantastic storytelling. Okay, so that's another refresher about his work, which you can find in lots of places still. And uh, I'm looking at the dates on these cards. I'm going to read one first, and then if I get to the other, I, um, I'll also read that. So one is listed from, yeah, this one here says, Tooth, like T-W-O, Tooth, September 19, 1997. So it means the 2nd of September. Um, and he had this stamp, I guess he called his company Sagapix. And he, of course he's no longer there, he's passed away. So the address doesn't matter now, it's been, it's moved on. But he says, uh, I was thinking a lot of you, Paul, due to long silence. Glad you're busy, happy with he, WB and BT. I think he means Warner Brothers and Bruce Tim, because I was working on backgrounds for the Warner Brothers cartoons, as I think I've said. Um, and he said, and thanks for a long look at your great Superman backgrounds, all well-designed, dramatically toned. I, I guess I'd sent him photocopies or printouts of my uh, tonal designs for Superman animated. He says, methinks final background painters will simplify them much more just to get it out, in quotes. They remind me of, I guess he means my drawings. They remind me of Brazil's huge set pieces, and he means the movie Brazil. Huge set pieces, the huge duct, duct works, etc. Dark, moody. New paragraph. R.E. Regarding DC's Mark Chiarello, from whom I've not heard a word for nine months, till just before the San Diego Comic-Con, when, after it, he popped by. I guess he went to visit Alex. So keep sending him what you sent me, plus figure work, the whole nine yards, kiddo. So 97, I guess I was trying to get more work in comics. And uh, again, pretty much pre-internet, right? So there was no way to directly contact people. You had to phone or send stuff in or go to conventions. Some of which I did, but I, I didn't, I couldn't go to all the conventions. Uh, I, well, I really couldn't afford it, frankly. I mean, I had a young family, blah, blah, blah. You know, all these things young, young parents will understand. Um, you see, so he was, Alex was advising me to keep trying to sort of crack opened the mystery code of like how do you get more work out of comics people in this case mark chiarello who is a central figure at dc controlling the you know covers and things like that so um he said so keep sending him what you sent me plus figure work the whole nine yards kiddo if you've seen the alex ross painted illustration comic albums and now he comments on that he says uh Clever, facile, Ill illo talent, illustration talent, Ross, but no continuity sense. And all the superheroes change to look like his own photo models. <clears throat> and then he says, boo to that crap. Anywho, DC goes gaga, pays $2,000 plus per page for it. I guess he's talking about the page rate for Alex, to uh, Alex, to Alex Ross's painted comic pages. A staggering amount, especially back then. Um, but it's a business, so I guess they they sold a lot and they rewarded Alex Ross, so good for him for making the deal. Uh, so think of it, keep trying. Mark's, I think he means Mark Chiarello. Mark's recent promotion up into more projects overseeing will help you. Um, you've got, because I lose my place here, because Alex had this, as you can see, tightly spaced lettering and... Uh, Beautifully done, but it's like there's no, what do you call it, letting between the lines. Um, so think of it, keep trying. Mark Chiarello's, <coughs> Chiarello's recent promotion up into more projects overseeing will help you. You've got Bruce Tim as high reference uh, something Mark with DC too. I guess he means like the credential of having worked for, for Bruce Tim. He said, but your work surely alone is surely enough to put you over in the future. Easy. If, if and when you need or want book work to fall back on, maybe you and Bruce could team up too somehow on a DC book, painted or not. What? Well, no, that didn't happen. I didn't ever sense any interest from Bruce Tim and something like that. So um, 
that's enough about that. Uh, show Ross, we could show Ross what to leave out. The simple thing is always the best. Enjoyed your DC winter 97, 1997. I guess I sent him photos of my young, at that time, family. Winter 97, snaps of Little Miss R and your wife, etc. All happy, happy memory keepers for you. Saturday debuts new Batman cartoon series. As I would said to you in the earlier postcards, as I said to you, Bruce's further cartooning, doodling figures to unheroic head-body proportions and stylization is not his best move to date. But let's see. What? Best to you all, Paul. Alex T. And, uh, you know, another direct but friendly postcard. I don't live there anymore, so it doesn't matter. Not that anyone really cares where I live, but here's his duck. Trundling along with the exclamation mark. He had this duck on in various incarnations of it. And uh, I think I'll quickly read the other postcard. We still have time. And uh, in this one, the duck is now expired. So with an X for the eyeball, you know, dead duck. I don't know. And he's, this one's from 31 October 1998. And like I showed earlier, it's this great Windsor, Windsor McKay cartooning. With little Nemo in Slumberland. Um, night of all Halloweenies tonight. Nice to get word from you, kiddo. Here, you and your family are fine and healthy, snug and solvent. I've been cloistered for six years now, I think. He became very reclusive in his house. <clears throat> Maybe I'd asked him, I don't know, but he volunteered that. I've been clo cloistered, so that would be from 1992 onwards, he says. So I've been cloistered for six years now, I think. DC Comics new upcoming archives, hardcover collection of Jack Cole's Plastic Man, uh, the first 20 tales of Plastic Man, will bear my Cole-styled line work um, out by November, December, I'm sure. Didn't want to do it, twice refused it. Why have Toth mimic Cole when DC has tons of fine Cole art for cover art? So at last I did it, sort of. Nothing remarkable, it just works. Egad. Still, Cole would have been best. Yes, I too like that Batman black and white tone cover. I must have asked him in a letter. Glad to hear DC Chiarello and company got work for, got work to you. Good luck with those peckerheads. Hope you get lots more jobs. I'm still not a fan of the Dini Tim TV Super Bat Batmans. They blew it into self-parody. From just plain, lousy thinking, planning, board work, staging, direction. Styled so poorly, woodenly animated, mostly too many bad bits. Uh, can't tell what that word is. In it, for money, spent on all of it. So he's saying they, he feels they spent too much money for what they got back. And then he says, boo, the superhero, or the hero leads suffer for lousy art characterization. I give up. Sorry, Paul. Good Good Bee Gees, like backgrounds or not, it sucks. Guess he was in a crusty mood. Dunno what's next for Dini and Tim. Big Buck's name powers that they've become, but I'm doubtful it'll be better. More's the pity. Very arrogantly m mediocre. No, I won't see Ryan. Steelberg is a, is a effing bore. A comic book mind, indeed. He called Steven Spielberg Steelberg. I remember on the phone he said that because he just really didn't like Steven Spielberg. And I think he explains, uh, does he mention it here? Yeah. He says, um, to repeat, he says, no, I won't see Ryan. Spielberg is an effing bore, a comic book mind indeed. Imitating real 16 millimeter combat footage with his noisy overblown battle gore is no feat to me. He's talking about, of course, say, yeah, saving Private Ryan. Duel, which uh, which is a TV movie with Dennis Weaver, that was Sp uh, Spielberg's first real big thing. Duel, to me, is his only really fine work, his TV movie of the week of 30 years ago. But uh, 30 years from back then, which was, as I said, 1998. Um, his only really fine work, his TV movie of the week of 30 years ago. But he's piled up zillions anyhow, so what do I know? He, Lucas, Coppola, De Palma, Altman, Ol Oliver... All give me aggravated yawns for recent works, but I did like your Mary Cassatt art note card. So I'm not all bad. Pretty close, though. Take care, y'all. Happy holidays in 99. Write at length. 
Send Xeroxes of new art of any type, kiddo, now and then, okay? Best, Alex Toth. And uh, Mary Cassatt was a French, uh, of course, female artist who is a really wonderful painter. And uh, I had sent him a postcard with that on the front, and you know he appreciated it. I mean, he had really wide tastes. He wasn't just a comic book guy. He studied art and painting and music and literature and stuff. So, and he, and he always advised people, including me, to do that, Like, which is great advice, eternally great advice. Don't just be a narrow-minded person drawing in from many influences. So there you go. That's another installment of Toth Cards. The living duck and the less active duck. Um, but, you know, as always, Alex put out his energy into corresponding with people, and I'm grateful that he did. I have these fine cards and letters from him, so I'm going to keep doing this series. People seem to like it. And uh, thanks for listening. And as ever, if you like this content, please subscribe if you haven't. It really does help, as everybody says, but it really does help to like, comment, share. If you like it, put a link to it somewhere on social media, please. And thank you. And we'll talk to you next time.